Welcome again to part two of the explanation of the features of Q-Player lighting. Perhaps we should take a moment at this point before going on and describing the other feature buttons on the top menu bar and talk a moment about <coughs> the feedback and settings of both the Q listing and the channel dimmer listings. In the Q listing, there are some feedback and indicators that we want to mention. First off, as we can see, a gold color in the first box indicates the queue that we are presently sitting in. That is, the, that is the setting of the lights that are on the stage at this particular point in time. We have already run Q10, so channel 1 is up, nothing else is happening. When we go to play the queue by pressing the space bar or hitting the play button, we can see that channel 1 will start to to fade it the line here will be blue in this indicator box while the queue is running for those four seconds when it is complete it will change to gold and tell you that yes this is the queue that you are sitting in at any point in time you can check what settings will be happening for the other queue say if we click here or click here we click on 30 we'll see that what 30 is going to do is bring channel 1 down to 0 or have channel 1 still at 0. Channel 2, 3, and 4 will adjust to those particular values. However, right now, as we say, we are sitting in channel 20 and nothing is on. When we run Q30, it only takes a half a second to go to these values. Setting what channels are involved in a particular Q is done primarily with the mouse. We can select any particular channel one by one and set its value. However, that's not normally what would happen in a show. We might want to select channels 5 through 10. And if you remember your old word processing skills, you know that if you click on 5, hold the shift button down, and then click on 10, 5 through 10 will be selected. Likewise, if you select 5 and you want to select 7, you can hold the control key down and channel 7 will be added, channel 9. Anything you click on with the control key down will be individually selected. You can also hold the mouse down and select a whole range of values simply by doing that. The values that appear in here can be adjusted by the, the mouse wheel. Here I'll roll it up a little bit, roll it back down, and or the keyboard, the arrow keys, will increment by one, up arrow, down arrow, page up and page down, do it by tens, 10, 20, 30, and home and end keys will go from 100 to zero. So it's very easy to set and, and change as your lighting designer says, okay, let's bring up, give me uh, these channels, all right, let, let's add 10% add to that. You can just hit the page up command and there you go. Likewise, if you're more familiar with uh, entering values uh, from from the keypad, if you press the F2 button, you will get the keypad entry ability. Here we can use the number pad and select and values and channels. Say for example we want to set 5 through 11 back down to 0. If I go over to the number pad and say 5 slash 11 at 0, enter, we will select those and it will go to 0. You have several options in the syntax that you put in the keyboard entry and those are explained in the help file. The help file, now that I've brought it up, We'll describe everything that we're talking about here in our um, in our videos, preferences, groups, fixtures, submasters, soft pad, the main screen. Here we're talking about the toolbar. Now we're walking through the toolbar. Here we the what I've been talking about with the queue list and the the various commands will show up here. The channels. Here we talk through all that's happening and what you, how, how you can work the various uh, keyboards. Let's go back to our top menu bar. I believe we left off 
at the red X, which would be the st stop the queue, and the blackout button, which is also the escape key will also work as a blackout button. Where this comes into play, stopping the queue, is say for example, let's add a queue um, with a long queue delay. Let's say that we're going to have a 60 second queue. And we can save that. Okay, now if we play this queue, let's give it some um, let's give it some values. Let's bring up uh, five, six, and seven totally. Uh, we can go take one out of that. Yeah, we'll record that. Okay, likewise. So now we can see we we're here. We go here. All right. Now, if we want to play this. you can see it counting down and it's going to take a long time to, to run we may not want to wait wait that long we can either we can stop it right there or if we're do we're doing it um, we can use at the if we have the blue selection here we can click the end key on our keyboard and it will immediately go to the endpoint values which is a uh, makes a shorter time when you when you're setting uh, setting cues. Let's go back to our old friend number one here, and let's talk a moment about the next button. Which w briefly, blackout sh should be fairly uh, self-explanatory to to people. If you click this, everything is going to go to zero. Likewise, you can press the escape button and do that. There are special cases when we get into future discussions about uh, LEDs uh, where we need to identify the particular intensity channel of that LED to have it work in the blackout as opposed to having the red, green, blue values uh, take effect. Let's talk a moment about submasters. Let me bring this into the video window. Here for every channel, this is where we map the channels to the dimmers. In this case you can see we have pretty much a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship but we can have channel 7, say this particular one out here, channel 7 could control not so much dimmer 7 but any dimmer that we that we wanted to or multiple dimmers. We could have it be, thank you, we could have it go and change uh, channels um, Let's see, where are we? 250, say it's channels 250 and 251. So that any time we save that, so that any time we adjust channel 7, the dimmer channels 250, 251 would change up in the dimmer room or in the back panel, wherever you have your, your actual, your, your dimmer rack. Submasters, we can bring those back into the window here. Submasters are commonly uh, added uh, on ex expensive consoles. However, our experience at, uh, at the Blackfriars Theater where we work is that in over the oh, five years and 30 some odd uh, or more shows, uh, let's see, five, six, yeah, some odd shows that we've done there, we've used Submasters in one particular show. So it's not a, a feature that I, I would would normally use what we what ha what how this works is you would set the the values of the channels that would apply to these this particular submasters record them and then when you activate this slider those channels would would change to their dimmer values you may also address this this submaster as channel 258 so that if you wanted to go back to the sub soft patch and change one of these the existing channels on your main grid to channel 258 then changing a value here would change the submaster so you have quite a, quite a bit of uh, flexibility there fixture button is where we're working with our LEDs and this really should require a whole uh, video unto itself. But briefly, let's say that we had these particular uh, LED types installed uh, in our theater. Uh, 
we can edit the characteristics of them up to 20 different channels for that for that fixture and we would identify uh, which channels are red, green, blue, intensities, effects. And there, where that would show up is if we have it installed at a particular address, in this case we have the dip switch on the Aurora uh, set to, to 140. If we go to 140 on our chart, we'll see that we get a hint that that's the red, green, blue, and intensity channels. This particular light is a little unusual in that uh, uh, TMX value 4 is the minimum uh, dimming value. Uh, you go below that and it starts doing uh, unusual <laughs> things, if you will. As a quick introduction, uh, if we do have, uh, we can click the or one feature you, you might enjoy is in setting the, the color uh, for that that LED, the red, green, blue values, you can use either the color picker. We can click for that particular color, and those it will tell you how you want to set the uh, red, green, and blue. Likewise, if you have uh, if you know a gel color that you're trying to replicate, say so our old friend R4, Roscoe 4, then it will show you that particular color, and then these are the red, green, and blue values that. Uh, correspond to that. We can also set um, some color scroller channels and that's an added feature that you may want to read in the help file about how to how to set uh, uh, scroller channels. What happens if you do change the value of the uh, color scrollers you'll get a prompt to say whether you want to add a dummy uh, change cue while those lights associated with that scroller are out. Normally you want to change your scrollers while the intensity of the associated light uh, is at zero. Channel groups are another way to quickly set a group of lights. If we bring up the channel group box, we can see that we can set up to, I think, 26 or so different groups. Here in this case, uh, I've set group one for our white uh, down lights. Uh, group two, the channels 21 through 29 are our blue. Uh, down lights so that when my lighting director says okay I need some more blue down light I can type G2 on the keyboard and all those channels will be selected and I can say okay yeah let's set those at fixie uh, it's very easy to to change that we can we can then uh, say we want to do our white down lights and we do G1 we do that if we have some LEDs some fixtures you can name put your reds on a particular group your blues in another group, your greens in another group, and so select the whole, the whole crew of them. The preferences box allows us to select a lot of the operational uh, factors of of the uh, program. Um, this particular skin that we're looking at right now is called air. If you want to change the the colors uh, of the screen. Uh, if you if you particularly like uh, more of a say an iTunes uh, type look, you can select that and things will eventually go and change to to that color setting. Uh, likewise, HUD Air, you can try those and and see which one uh, you, you really like. We normally like to keep the the screen fairly dark uh, in the booth. Uh, it's fairly exposed in our particular theater. Uh, select uh, clock color. Um, <laughs> sort of a trivial comment, but if you don't like yellow, you can change that to blue, red, green, etc. Uh, renumbering the cues by a certain increment. This will change the, the cue call numbers so that after a, a long editing session, if you find yourself having uh, cues 31, 31.5, 32.6, etc., because you've had to insert uh, a lot of cues and you want to clean that up, you can do that. Uh, quite easily by just renumbering the cues. Uh, Warm-up level is a very uh, good feature for those of us who have many incandescent lights uh, still existing. If you set the warm-up level to something just as easy as one, what happens is that all the intensity levels of an incandescent light will be set to to one out of the 255 levels. This gives you a certain warm-up uh, value, may extend uh, the life of your bulbs, 
Um, it's usually not uh, visible at all in a uh, in a theater situation, and uh, may, like I say, increase your your um, your bulb life. Number of channels is how many channels you wish to ha control and have displayed. In this case, we have it set to 256. As I said before, we can go up to 1024 using certain um, DMX interface uh, connectors. You can change the QList font to uh, your particular, if you like Arial, MS Sans Serif. You can change the size and the, in the color of this, of this QList over here. Uh, setting the cue background, uh, if you don't like black, you can set it to something dark, uh, set it to something light. Uh, we normally, like I say, we can set it to, uh, we normally keep it in black. Auxiliary file source is used when you are ch uh, either changing uh, venues uh, where you're using cue player lighting or if you want to keep track of your uh, soft patches and fixture settings for a particular show, you may set these file source to either be follow the cue player program itself, or those auxiliary files will follow the the cue file. So if you had a particular show, uh, say sample, or if we had, if we remember, if we go back here, we were dealing with uh, rep plot, or we were dealing with the assassin's cue list you could assign the soft patch and fixture files to go along with that particular uh, Q file. Q file. Uh, mouse wheel stop, we mentioned uh, briefly before, would be uh, how many steps do we go per click of the, of the mouse wheel. Remember when we were over here and we were setting it, this is at one, and you can see it just spins one at a time. If we set it to something like 10, we can get quite a... Uh, we can go 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, that's up to you as to how, how you want to do that. Uh, color scrollers, uh, your preference again. Uh, do, you, do you deal with them uh, like you would a uh, intensity of a light in that the values go from 0 to 100? Or do the values go from 0 to uh, 255? Setting the fade default is the default that you have when you go to add a cue. That would be the time that goes into this box here. It uh, just saves you a little bit of time if you if to, uh, to do that. The display refresh is when we're changing the queues and the queue is running, how often do we update the current value on this screen? It's not uh, critical. You may just want to have it do it when it, uh, when it finishes the queue. Um, personally, I like a little feedback uh, as the queue is running that, it, uh, that, it's, that it's changing. Advanced and play, also known as, as ETC mode, um, this came about because in, in because in Q Player Premium, the sound program, the you select the cue first and then play it. In this case, uh, in an ETC board, people are more used to having again the sitting the paradigm of being in a sitting cue, and when you hit play, it advances to this the next cue and begins to play it. You can change that to to play at a particular line by changing, uh, by unclicking this box. Prompt for save or add. Uh, we've, we've done that. When we do click save, um, we can get a prompt to say, okay, are you saving to this current queue or do you want it as a new queue? Similar to the window that came up when we, when we changed the value here and we changed the queue line uh, over there. We can uh, show the dimmer patches uh, or not. That was, if, if you remember briefly, when we had the uh, patch screen up, if we click on this line here, we get, a soft, we get an information that says, okay, where is channel DMX address currently patched to? If that gets in your way as you're setting soft patching, you can turn it off. Uh, you can set up a text file uh, if you don't like a linear uh, curve for dimming for your LEDs, you can use one of the uh, text files that is provided in the install package and or use a simple editor and change it yourself. When we connect to QPlayer Premium, which is our final button on the top menu here, here QPlayer Premium can act as the driver for QPlayer lighting so that you only have uh, one console and one, one operator and he or she can drive both the sound files and the lighting files. 
but you need to be able to connect them over the network. And then this would be the uh, address and port number uh, that that you would you would use. You can find out from QPlayer Premium what its address is by looking on its help about, just like you can here. This is what address uh, QPlayer Lighting is sitting at. And then you can also set finally what OSC port number um, you're going to uh, you're going to listen to, and what the command is. The in this case, command OSC commands to slash CP Light are going to be the ones that QPlayer Lighting will respond to. So briefly, uh, that is the, the overview of QPlayer Lighting. If you do have more questions uh, for that, please, you can either contact myself or I would suggest strongly uh, going through the help file and uh, reading all the instructions that are contained therein. I may have, uh, in this video tutorial, I may have missed uh, a point or there are some particular ones. Um, things like I didn't explain all the different keys, what they do. Here you have a keyboard summary, which you can maybe print out, stick to, <laughs> stick to your console, uh, whatever. Uh, enjoy QPlayer Lighting, and we will, in future videos, talk more about uh, LEDs and or features that uh, you write to me about. Thank you very much.